The search for exceptional prompts enters the next round. This tutorial is divided into three main segments. Firstly, we will discover the so-called amigurumi style. Then I would like to show you which prompt structure I use in Kling 1.6 to create the animation sequences you see here in the background. And finally, I would like to give you another insight into the retexture function of the external image editor in Midjourney. All this and much more on the Midjourney and Company website in a moment. Therefore, I thought, let me tell you a short story. Some of you will certainly be familiar with it in a different form and show you the prompt details and visual results. This time, the ringwraiths and the orcs are the good guys. The hobbits, dwarves and horsemen are the villains. My first port of call was ChatGPT. Equipped with my pictures, I asked Alex, Hi Alex, we had our last interview. Look, I have a few interesting images that I would like to use to tell an exciting story. Can you please evaluate them for me and add a whole new twist to the story by reversing the sequence of events, turning the characters upside down, so to speak? I then took these prompts and animated the images from Midjourney with Kling 1.6. I really have to admit that Kling fascinates me every time. Every prompt, I'm not exaggerating here, every prompt was a hit and produced exactly the result I had previously imagined. To show you how I did it, you will find two examples in the description of the video below. Perhaps they will inspire you to try it out yourself. I'll also show you in this tutorial. Just stay tuned. Before we look at the short story, a brief remark on how I went about it. I am indeed a very image-driven person. That means I have to visualize my ideas, or concepts in a picture right away. This makes it easier to define scenes and storylines, at least for me. Inspired by the big fantasy epic, I think everyone knows what movie it is. I created different prompts in Midjourney. It was important that I inserted an Amigurumi style at the beginning of each prompt to get the desired style. This was followed by a small cinematic scene description to give the whole image an epic effect. In this case, it's the white warriors with glowing eyes, misty mountain pass with ancient runestones glowing faintly, and so on. I think this image is really good, but what I like even better is this picture here. These are the ring wraiths. Here too I created a prompt in Midjourney. Cute Amigurumi style group of different black ring wraiths with glowing red eyes and black cloaks. Then I started Kling and animated these pictures with version 1.6. I'll show you using this image as an example. You are probably already familiar with the Kling user interface. You can upload an image of your choice in the image to video section at the top left. I then entered the following in the prompt section. The Amigurumi style spirits with yellow glowing eyes are slowly walking while the camera is static. Muted colors. You can find all the videos you have created on the right hand side. As you can see, there is only one result for each of them because every prompt really was a match. The fact that you are so deeply involved and enthusiastic about it means that you can spend quite a lot of money, not to mention become poor. But the results motivate you to keep going. That's the great thing about AI and Kling in particular. I have built a slide here to explain my prompt structure. At the beginning, there is the object, the Amigurumi style spirits, followed by some features such as glowing eyes. This is followed by, I'll call it, the main task, i.e., slowly walking. Of course, you could also insert talking or running. The connecting word while before the camera information is important to establish the reference to the camera. At the end, I add the phrase muted colors. AI video platforms tend to make colors very intense or dark. If you make this entry, you can prevent this negative effect somewhat. It is also very important to think in short time spans when making settings. You can select either five seconds or 10 seconds for Kling. I recommend only working with five seconds for the time being because the AI sometimes takes on an unsightly momentum of its own with longer outputs, then things get lost. Just remember that you can't travel the world in five seconds 
make small jumps. The result will be much better. Move your object from A to B, whereby the distance between these two points should be relatively short. Take a conscious look at movies on television. They usually cut after five seconds. Therefore, when you are developing your concept, simply think in short periods of time. If we now look at the movie with the white spirits, we can see that the prompt worked perfectly. A pro tip, if there are flags, smoke or fire in the picture, you don't have to write anything about it. Kling will identify this on its own. That was the first theoretical part. Stay tuned. Then after the short film, I'll tell you something about the retexture function of the external image editor from Midjourney. This helps tremendously to transform complex images. But more on that in a moment. Now let's dive into the story, The War of Twilight and Fire, a rewritten Amigurumi epic about fellowship, adventure and fallen empires. Have fun! The Wars of Twilight and Fire The Shadow Riders emerge. Their red eyes pierce the mist, not to terrify, but to guide lost souls who wander too far. These silent watchers patrol the ancient borders, ensuring that peace endures, but peace is fragile. From the molten plains, skeletal guardians rise once more. They awaken to defend the world's heart from a looming darkness that creeps beneath the hills. The two groups stand as the last line between chaos and serenity. Far from these battle-hardened lands, the wandering folk grow restless. Their insatiable hunger drains the fields, leaving once vibrant meadows barren. With no harvest left, they eye the lands beyond, where greater riches lie unclaimed. Their greed draws the attention of the Steel Lords, the armoured men of the East. Believing their might to be unmatched, they prepare for conquest. Towers rise and the drums of war thunder across the valleys. As the Steel Lords march, the Emerald Marauders answer the call. These green warriors, often mistaken for brutes, rally to defend the defenseless. Their blades shine not with malice, but with a promise to stand against the greed of men. From the golden fields, the Horse Lords thunder forward. No longer the protectors of free lands, they seize farms and villages, branding the earth as their own. Wherever their hooves fall, shadows deepen. In the west, a new hope rises from the forgotten cities of stone. The Crimson Legion marches, their glowing eyes the last defiant flames against the spreading dominion of men. They are few, but they fight with a fury unmatched. As battles rage, the forests awaken. The ancient tree folk, stirred from slumber, emerge as towering giants. They crush fortresses and scatter the armies that trespass in their woods. High in the mountains, the silent spirits gather. These ghostly figures, guardians of ancient oaths, descend from the peaks to remind the world of the price of forgotten promises. Finally, at the edge of the world, the seafarers return. Ships sail from misty shores, their warriors hardened by the sea. They land not as liberators, but as conquerors, eager to claim dominion over land and water alike. The war rages on, not for power, but for the survival of balance. As steel and fire clash, only the shadows of the forest and the glow of crimson eyes stand between destruction and the dawn of a new era. I hope you enjoyed it. By the way, the music was created with Suno, version 4. I have already made a tutorial for this. At the end of the video, you will find a corresponding cross-reference. The speaker comes from Eleven Labs. It's also worth using this service. This is especially true if you don't have a particularly interesting voice yourself, like me. You will find a link to Eleven Labs at the bottom of the description. If you want, you can click on it and book the service with Eleven Labs. I will then receive a tiny fraction as commission from Eleven Labs. If you do that, thank you very much. I did the post-production with Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. As promised, we now come to the last part of the tutorial. 
It's about the retexture function of the external image editor in Midjourney. To do this, go to the Midjourney homepage and click on the word Edit in the navigation on the left. Then switch to a new section. Click on Edit New Image at the top left and select on the next page whether you want to use an image from a URL. This is the blue button or an image that you have already downloaded to your computer. This is the brown button. That's why this editor is called the External Image Editor. For our tutorial, I choose the brown button Edit Uploaded Image and upload an image of an orc in keeping with the theme. It fits in with the overall fantasy setting. I generated this orc via Midjourney. However, I won't explain how to use the External Image Editor in detail, for example, how to modify individual areas in this tutorial. I have already published a longer tutorial on this topic. You will also find a cross-reference at the end of the video. I would now like to show you how we can transform this photorealistic image of a fighting orc into a motif with this special amigurumi style. To do this, select the Retexture tab next to the word Edit at the top. This activates its function. Then enter a fighting orc in the command line. Briefly describe what you see. Now add the entry an amigurumi style at the beginning of this prompt and then click on Submit Retexture. In the right hand section, you can see how Midjourney starts to create four different alternatives. It takes a little while, depending on the time of day, and then the results are ready. You can clearly see a sewn, crocheted, or knotted orc doll ish something. If we then compare the initial image with the final result, we see that it is almost identical. The pose, the facial expression. Always as a crocheted figure. I think this interpretation fits best because orcs are usually green. The whole thing follows a simple logic. Enter a fighting orc, that's the original image, and add in advance that you want this particular style. The results are like this. If we go back to the original image and change the prompt, we could of course also achieve completely different results. For example, a fighting orc with pink skin. And so on. I've prepared a few examples for you. So you can see what's possible. Just be creative. For example, the neon cyberpunk orc or the realisation as a cartoon character. I hope you have lots of fun with it. For some projects, it's a really indispensable tool for achieving a certain style. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and recommend it to others. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.